Okay, this is The Mysterious Tadpole, written and illustrated by Stephen Kellogg. Greetings, nephew, cried Lewis's Uncle McAllister. I've brought a wee bit of Scotland for your birthday. Thanks, said Lewis. Look, Mom and Dad, it's a tadpole. Lewis named him Alphonse and promised to take very good care of him. Lewis took Alphonse to school for show and tell. Class, here we have a splendid example of a tadpole, exclaimed Miss Shelbert. Let's ask Lewis to bring it back every week so we can watch it become a frog. Miss Shelbert was amazed to see how quickly Alphonse grew. Maybe it's because he only eats cheeseburgers, said Lewis. When Alphonse became too big for his jar, Lewis moved him to the kitchen sink. He's the perfect pet, said Lewis. Lewis and Alphonse loved to play games. Be careful, Lewis, said his mother. The living room is not a soccer field. Something is going to get broken. And she was right. That same day, the soccer ball slammed into Aunt Tabitha's antique lamp. This tadpole is out of control, said Lewis's mother. Something must be done. It won't happen again, promised Lewis. I'll take Alphonse to obedience school. The only animals at the obedience school were dogs. Some of their owners stared at Alphonse suspiciously. Pretend you're a dog, whispered Lewis. Alphonse tried to bark, but it sounded like a burp. Hold on a minute, said the trainer. What kind of dog is this? He's a hairless spotted water spaniel from Scotland, explained Lewis. Alphonse quickly learned to sit, stay, and retrieve. He graduated at the top of his class. My parents will be very pleased, said Lewis. But Lewis's parents were not pleased when Alphonse outgrew the sink and had to be moved to the bathtub. This shower is too crowded, complained Lewis's father. This bathroom is a mess, moaned Lewis's mother. At least Lewis's classmates enjoyed Alphonse, who was still making weekly visits. Wow, show and tell is more fun than recess, they yelled. But one day, Miss Shelbert decided that Alphonse was not turning into an ordinary frog. She asked Lewis to stop bringing him to school. By the time summer vacation arrived, Alphonse had outgrown the bathtub. We could buy the parking lot next door and build him a swimming pool, suggested Lewis. Be sensible, declared Lewis's parents. Swimming pools are expensive. We're sorry, Lewis, but this situation has become impossible. Tomorrow, you will have to take your tadpole to the zoo. But I can't put my friend in a cage, cried Lewis. That night, Lewis was very sad, until he remembered that the gym in a nearby high school had a swimming pool. Lewis hid Alphonse under a carpet and smuggled him inside. Nobody uses this place during the summer, whispered Lewis. You'll be safe here. After making sure that Alphonse felt at home, Lewis said goodbye. I'll be back tomorrow with a big pile of cheeseburgers, he promised. Lewis came every afternoon to play with Alphonse. In the mornings, he earned the money for the cheeseburgers by delivering newspapers. The training continued as well. Lewis would say, Alphonse, retrieve! And Alphonse would succeed every time. As summer vacation passed, Lewis became more and more worried about what would happen to Alphonse when the high school kids returned. After his first day of classes, Lewis ran to the high school and found the gym bustling with activity. The swim team was heading for the pool. Stop, cried Lewis. On your mark, bellowed the coach. Get set. Excuse me, sir, said Lewis. Go, roared the coach. Alphonse rose to the surface to welcome the swimmers. 
It's a submarine from another planet, shrieked the coach. Call the police. Call the Navy. No, it's only a tadpole, said Lewis. He's my pet. The coach was upset and confused. You have until tomorrow, he cried, to get that creature out of the pool. Lewis telephoned his friend, Miss Seavers, the librarian, and asked for her help. I'll be right there, she said. Miss Seavers rushed to meet Lewis at the high school. When she saw Alphonse, she was so startled that she dropped her purse into the water. Retrieve, said Lewis, and Alphonse did. Where did this astounding animal come from? cried Miss Seavers. He was a birthday gift from my uncle, Lewis replied. Miss Seavers telephoned Uncle McAllister. Oh, the wee tadpole, he said. Why, he came from the lake nearby. It's the one folks call Loch Ness. Brace yourself, Lewis, Miss Seaver said. I believe your uncle found the Loch Ness monster. I don't care, cried Lewis. Alphonse is my friend and I love him. He pleaded with Miss Seavers to help him raise enough money to buy the parking lot so he could build a big swimming pool for Alphonse. Suddenly, Miss Seavers had an idea. Long ago, a pirate ship sank in the harbor, she said. No one has ever been able to find it or its treasure chest, but perhaps we can. The next morning, they drove to the harbor and rented a boat. This is a treasure chest, cried Lewis. Retrieve! Alphonse disappeared under the water and returned with the chest. It was filled with gold and jewels. Let's buy the parking lot and get to work, cried Miss Seavers. Lewis's parents were shocked to see a construction crew in the parking lot. Lewis, they cried, what in the world is going on here? Alphonse found a pirate treasure ship, explained Lewis, and we used part of our gold to buy you this present. Lewis's parents were shocked once again. Tickets for a vacation cruise to Hawaii? They gasped. And, said Lewis, you don't have to worry about us because Granny has agreed to babysit. They hugged Lewis. They kissed Alphonse. How soon can we leave? They cried. Immediately, said Lewis. By the time Lewis's parents returned, the swimming pool was being enjoyed by everyone in the city. A week later, Lewis said, Alphonse, tomorrow is my birthday, which means that you've been my best friend for a whole year. The next day, Uncle McAllister arrived for the party. Greetings, Lewis, my lad, he exclaimed. I've come with a curious stone from the hills of Scotland. Happy birthday. Wow, thanks said Lewis. Suddenly, the stone began to tremble and crack. 